Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, welcome to this tutorial. In this video, I want to walk you through the GeoPix interface. Uh, nothing too deep. We're going to stay pretty high level and just talk about really what the purpose of various parts of UI are and not really how to use them uh, and not what they do in specific situations, etc, etc. So uh, yeah, this is really going to be a sit back and just take it in kind of video and we're going to just discuss uh, kind of the the intention behind the way things are built and kind of the inspiration for a few things and so on and so forth. So when you start GeoPix, you're going to be greeted with a uh, screen like this. It's got the about page, it's kind of a splash screen. You have a few buttons here. You can check out the donors, um, license. Uh, there's a few buttons over here for the Patreon, GitHub, and website. <clears throat> uh, but to kind of get out of here, all you have to do is click anywhere in the gray or just click the X. Uh, and that's going to take you straight into the software. So we'll talk about all the different uh, navigation shortcuts and how to use the viewport camera and all that fun stuff in other videos. Uh, for now, I really just want to tell you what all this stuff is, right? What you're supposed to do with it. So in GeoPix, most every project just about is going to start in the editor. You're going to be creating your project um, first as a thing that you can see physically and then also what you set up in your viewport here is also going to instruct GeoPix how to map and process those pixels and send them out into some kind of usable DMX information or a video wall, um, you know, HDMI signal, etc, etc. Uh, but really it has to start in the editor. If you don't have anything in the editor, nothing you do in the IO tab or the perform tab is going to really have any impact at all. It's not going to be any use. So uh, pretty much every project has to start in the editor. You are designing the thing first, either from something that you know you need to build, or if you're just experimenting and creating something from scratch as a piece of art, then you know you may not know what you're trying to make, and there's also a workflow for that as well. Uh, basically, the, the viewport here, you have Z uh, on the blue and X on the red, and Y on the green. Y is the vertical. So uh, this is the world view. Uh, the default unit in here is, uh, you know, one grid unit here is one meter. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, there is a kind of a, a size comparison. If you're going from, say, Blender to uh, GeoPix, I think it's times 100 uh, to get it from their meters to uh, GeoPix meters, but something we'll cover in another video as well. Okay, so uh, this is the viewport, and over here in the top we have uh, some some buttons here. These are going to be mostly here every single time, no matter what you have selected, but there are some hidden menu items that will come up uh, based off of what you have selected. So if you have a piece of geometry selected or if you have a fixture selected, uh, these different buttons with different sub-menu items will show up based on what you have clicked and selected on. So. It is partially context-based, but also some of this stuff is always going to be here, like select, view, of course, the undo button, and the object hull and pix mode toggle. So if you have a fixture selected or a surface object, uh, you can actually switch between object mode, hull mode, and possibly pix mode, depending on which of those objects it is. Uh, very few objects in GeoPix have a sub-object mode, but that's the best way to think of this. When you're working with a fixture, you can move that fixture around as an object, but you can also go inside that fixture and you can actually tweak, edit, add, subtract, modify, and build out, you know, on a pixel to pixel basis, your actual, you know, pixel array, your LED strip, whatever it might be. Uh, and so that's what these other modes are for. Uh, so we'll talk about all that in a later video, of course. Uh, and over here on the left, we have some of the most common uh, basically tools you're going to use in the viewport. You have select, marquee, uh, move, rotate, scale, and a snap move, which is a very cool tool. It's a little bit different. It's a twist on some of the other snap tools you might have seen in other softwares. Uh, so very useful, very common. You've probably used these before in other softwares. Over here you got the viewport gizmo. Uh, this is mostly an indicator, but you can also click on it and go into an orthographic mode. Uh, so fun stuff. Uh, over here on the right, we have uh, two different panes, and this is the only tab out of three tabs of the software that have these two different panes. Uh, most of the other ones, the I.O. and the Perform, just have one big attribute editor, but over here we have the Outliner, and we also have an Object Attribute Editor. So 
Um, basically, the idea here is, you know, you're going to be selecting objects in your scene. If you want to select them, you know, visually, you can click on them right out here in the world, right? But if you want to actually select them uh, in the list view and you actually want to click on things and you want to see the hierarchy, you can actually do that here in the outliner. So it's a very useful view uh, depending on what you're trying to do. Maybe you're trying to group things. Maybe you're trying to um, reorganize things. And this really helps in some of those cases. Uh, you'll see these two things here. Um, they don't actually show up in the viewport because these things are always there. They're just permanent objects. They're kind of sticky to the top of the outliner. So you can click on those and you can edit those uh, directly here and they'll always be there. So uh, as you can see, we have the, uh, the attribute editor. This is something you'll see everywhere in GeoPix, right? On the right side of your screen, almost always you'll have a place where you have settings for something that you have selected or some window that you have open. And this is where you're going to basically uh, tweak and adjust parameters for that object. And you know, once you've tweaked those objects, uh, parameters, you can uh, save, duplicate, and do all kinds of stuff. So, Okay, so that's the editor, and that's kind of the right bar. We're calling that the right bar. You can also resize this if you want to, you know, give more space to the outliner for one some reason or another, or basically make the attribute editor the thing you see. <clears throat> uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, a couple of the things to mention in the overall application window, we of course have our top bar, file tools, help. This is something that you see in pretty much every piece of software. Over here, we have some pretty common ones too, the X, the maximize, the minimize. This one is a bit different. This is called span, and this is <clears throat> kind of like full screen, but it takes into account other monitors as well. So if you are trying to send out uh, video data to uh, monitor number two, or you're trying to put your you know, IO graph or your perform tab on another monitor for a multi-monitor uh, workflow experience, the span button will uh, kind of help you out there. We're going to have a whole video on that as well. It's kind of the theme of this video is telling you that there'll be other videos, but yes, expect more information on this as well, but that's kind of a unique button. Okay, so top bar explained. Uh, you can drag things around just by moving that, of course. Uh, also down here at the bottom bar, we have uh, some other things. We have our GeoPix version. And we also have our touch designer version. Uh, this is, of course, the GeoPix version you have open, and this is the touch designer version that it is open in. Uh, so if you have multiple versions of touch installed, uh, make sure you're opening GeoPix in the right version because you'll have issues if you open it in the incorrect version. Uh, using the start.bat uh, file in the, in the GitHub that we discussed in the last video, we'll obviously make sure this isn't a problem, but Again, worth mentioning a second time. Okay, so in the bottom right, we have your uh, frame rate and your GRAM, which is your video RAM consumption. Uh, we're using just a small 16%, uh, not much going on yet in GeoPix. Uh, over here, we have our uh, settings and preferences and the display manager. Uh, so these are two things you'll probably hit up a lot. So these are shortcuts down here just to make them easy uh, to see and get to. Windows and GeoPix are pretty much just floating windows styled the same way. Um, this is the settings and preferences. You're going to come here a lot, so good idea to memorize this shortcut. Uh, Any time you want to get data or information into GeoPix, like from an outside source, whether it be audio, video, uh, channels, uh, DMX, etc., this will be where you set that up. And once you've set it up, you can then access that from various parts of the software. Same with outputs. If you're trying to send audio out to your speakers, you want to enable this and configure it to, you know, communicate with your speaker. And then once that's set up, you can pretty much send things to your audio output um, through different routing methods inside of GeoPix. So same with video. If you're trying to do, you know, things with projectors or video walls, this would be how you set up your target video surfaces. So Cool. All right. So that's the basic gist of the uh, overall window here. One last thing I guess I forgot to mention was the timeline down here. Uh, so in GeoPix, you can work one of two ways. You can work kind of freely with no kind of concept of time. And that's going to be one way of working. So if you're streaming data from another software application, if you're VJing in Resolume and you're passing that in as a video texture, you probably don't care about GeoPix's sense of time. So you can just leave this at the default of you know, paused one, frame one, all that's good. Um, if you're doing 
things more natively in GeoPix and you want to say render out a video for a client, you might actually want to put some macros out on this timeline. You might want to keyframe your camera and you can do all that here by scrubbing, setting keyframes, checking it out. Uh, and when you're done, you know, you can play this back and let it roll and do renders and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, right now it's set to a default of um, 10 seconds at 60 frames a second. Of course, you can adjust this um, to any time range that you want. You can do this uh, from the preferences, believe it or not, um, timeline settings. This will give you that information. So anyways, uh, the timeline is very useful. It's very straightforward. Um, you have a few options over here to open more floating windows. This is the sequence editor, and this is the keyframe editor. And this is basically kind of a dynamic floating window for keyframing whatever it is you have selected at that given moment. Play, pause, next keyframe, previous keyframe, return to start, loop, pretty standard stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> moving on, let's talk about the IO tab next. Uh, so this is kind of like the editor in the way it's laid out. You have your attributes on the right, no outliner. We don't need an outliner in the uh, IO tab. Things are kind of laid out in a two-dimensional two sense anyways, so it's just really not necessary for an outliner. Um, we have the main graph, which is like a two-dimensional version of what we have in the editor. We have a create menu, which uh, gives us a whole bunch of options to uh, create things. Uh, we have some other stuff here. This menu is context sensitive. So again, like the other one, you have some things that are going to be here all the time, like the graph and camera controls and also some things that are going to be here depending on what you have selected. Um, settings for whatever object or node, I guess, in this parameter or uh, in this context will show up here. Um, and, you know, other things like that. Again, we won't get into it now, uh, but this is very similar. Uh, the controls are a bit different. You know, you left click to drag on the graph, right click to marquee. Uh, you don't have to go to a marquee mode. It's always, always happening. Um, you can use the scroll wheel to uh, zoom in and out. And um, yeah, this the control scheme here works a lot like it does in native touch designer. So if you're familiar with touch, uh, I've built this to mimic that as closely as possible. So, um, all right, moving on to the perform tab. Now I saved this for last because in all honesty, at the time of this video anyways, the perform mode is still very much a work in progress. I am uh, very much going to be bumping this up in my priority list very soon. Uh, right now I'm just cranking out tutorials and making content that's going to help people get you know, up and running with the rest of GeoPix. But the perform tab is lacking uh, a lot of things that I would personally want it to have. And I'm sure a lot of things that people will need it to have for doing actual VJing. But the main idea here is that you create your canvas, right? Your perform canvas as we're calling it. And you can make this out of you know, various widgets uh, of types like buttons, sliders, um, more custom things, right? You have system widgets like the, the, the viz widget, which is just basically a window into your editor, right? So you don't have to constantly go back and forth. Uh, and once you're done designing your perform tab, you can go into perform mode, which is not the same as perform tab down here. And, you know, then you can actually interact with this stuff and it lets you uh, do cool things. You can connect this uh, perform UI to all kinds of stuff in GeoPix. You can connect it to the IO nodes. You can actually drive your nodes with a slider. So if you want the ramp to change colors or go up and down, you can actually you know, link it to this. Uh, there's some cool automation effects with these sliders. If you know how to work them, you can have some cool automatic fades. You can do it quick, you can do it slow. Um, uh, so some really cool stuff here I'm really excited about, but it's just not quite there yet. So anyways, other than that, this works just like the IO tab. You've got your attributes on the right. You know, you've got your your widgets here and you can grab these little boxes and resize them. So nothing out of the ordinary there. I think the big thing is going to be um, mapping this stuff and, and using it creatively in the other software's uh, places. So that's pretty much it. That is the overview of the GeoPix interface. Um, there's a lot more going on in each of these tools uh, and all of these different uh, things over here, you know, have different, uh, different options and different settings and different workflows and different shortcuts and hotkeys. Uh, but in the end of the day, um, what you really need to know is kind of what these three main tabs are doing and just to kind of recap for you. 
Uh, the editor is where it all starts. You have to make something that's going to be present in the scene visually because not only is this what you see and interact with if you're doing you know any kind of previs work, even if you're not doing previs previs work and you're basically just running content straight to devices, uh, you configure those devices by creating them in a digital space, right? So it has to be present here before it really shows up or does anything in GeoPix. The IO tab, it's really how you author your content. You can bring in video loops. You can do things generatively with the built-in nodes. You can stream content in front of the software if you're comfortable with that uh, and want to work that way. Uh, the IO tab is how you get stuff into GeoPix uh, in terms of like visual content, right? The actual textures that you're going to use. Um, stuff in the IO tab, you know, you're working like you would in Nuke or uh, Toxic or any other node based compositing system, Touch Designer also. Um, and eventually you send that, uh, that texture, right, coming out of a macro into a projector. And a projector is a 3D construct that takes that two dimensional uh, texture and it projects it into the 3D world in a variety of, of really interesting ways. And we'll get into all of that very soon. So uh, the IO tab is basically the way of taking um, various pieces of inputs, you know, whether it be channel data or OSC data or just textures and kind of coalescing that into something meaningful. And then of course, once it leaves the IO tab, it, it kind of goes from 2D into 3D in the editor. Uh, Perform tab, just to recap, is really your VJ interface. You know, you can make um, buttons to launch macros. You can make custom sliders, custom buttons, and you can create multiple canvases, right? Right now we're looking at one canvas, but you're going to be able to have the ability to create multiple canvases that you can switch between. Uh, and each canvas might do different things. It might have its own purpose and function. That really is up to you. And I think um, the perform tab will be one of the most flexible and amazing things once it's completed and ready to go. But that's one of the things that's taking longer uh, with it is, is really coming up with the right way to build it out, right? To give you the ultimate flexibility and not, you know, make it any more complicated than it needs to be. So, uh, yeah, so the perform tab and the IO tab kind of work together, right? You might consider the perform tab as something that, you know, is an input into the IO tab, but it can also be an input into the editor. Um, and the IO tab is definitely an input into the editor, right? And the editor is uh, what gets parsed and turned into you know usable data, whether that be what you see on the screen here or what goes out to your pixels and your video walls and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's it. That's the overview. I hope that was useful. If you think anything uh, could be explained better or if anything got left out, please let me know and I will do my best to elaborate further. Uh, so until the next video, uh, take it easy and hope this helped. Thanks.